last week we saw how Jesus treated tradition and it can be summed up in the scripture Matthew 15 3 please no Matthew 15 3 he answered and said to them why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition okay We learned that an elder is a bishop or overseer, is a pastor or shepherd. They're all exactly the same. Therefore, this raises a real problem. Why 2,000 years hatch has church leadership been set up so differently to what we see so clearly in the scriptures? Yeah. In the years that followed the death of the apostles, the church was led by a group of men that have been given the title the early church. In the first two centuries, these were Clement of Rome. Clement of Rome, he wrote a fam famous letter to the church of Corinth in AD 95. And he died in AD 100. Note, Paul died in AD 64. And it is possible that John the Apostle was still alive when <coughs> he, uh, 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 Clement wrote his famous mm. letter. Mm. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, wrote seven letters to various churches while travelling to Rome where he was martyred in AD 100. Justin Martyr was a noted apologist for the Christian faith who was martyred in Rome around AD 165. 165. Yeah. <coughs> Irenaeus studied under Polycarp, the Bishop of Smyrna, and became the Bishop of Lyon in France in AD 177. Cyprian, Bishop of Carthage, converted in AD 246 and was made a Bishop within two years. It is worth noting <coughs> also, that although the New Testament was written before AD 100, it was not compiled, verified, or available till much later on. Mm. In fact, it would be AD 400 before the whole New Testament was pronounced as canon. Wow. <coughs> thus, that, thus, those men quoted above, mm. unlike their Old Testament counterparts, were writing without the whole of the scriptures before them. Mm. However, it's very mysterious that having compiled the New Testament, the leaders of the churches did not adopt what was so obviously set before them. <coughs> so let us see what happens in the letter to the Corinthian church 
which Clement of Rome has written. written. And he said, the high priest has been given his own special service. The priests have been assigned their own place. And the Levites have their special ministrations enjoined on them. The layman is, a bound, is bound by the ordinance of the laity. In other words, Clement argued that it was a variation of the Levitical priesthood of the Old Testament and should be adopted as the leadership and government of the Christian Church. Therefore, as early as AD 95, possibly while the Apostle John was still alive, a distinction is made between the clergy and the laity, which is totally without foundation in scripture. Clement introduced the idea of a hierarchical priesthood totally separate and distinct from the so-called laity. In spite of 1 Peter 2, 4 and 5 please take 1 Peter 2 Coming as unto a living stone, disavowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house, an unholy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And 1, 1, 1 Peter 2 verse 9, please die. Yeah. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvellous light. Now, we understand <coughs> that these verses, the word people, is laos. From which we get our word Laity. The same people referred to as laity, believers, are also called a royal priesthood, an unholy nation. As far as the New Testament is concerned, we are all priests. 1 Peter 5, 2 and 3, please, Sheila. 1 Peter 2, uh, 5, 2 and 3. 1 Peter 5, 2 and 3. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. Yeah, um, that's a little bit different to uh, the King James. Neither as a 1 Peter 5, 3, neither as being lords over God, uh, God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. It's, it's the same, but worded differently. God's heritage 
is the King James Version translation of the Greek word kleros. is saying all believers no matter who they are are priests not elders that is those entrusted to the care of the elders are kleros or clergy The idea of a clergy laity divide thus becomes complete nonsense. Mm. In spite of this, Clement introduced the idea of a system whereby clergy replaced eldership and everyone else comprised the laity. Thus, from as early as 100 AD, we have the totally non-biblical idea of a clergy ruling and a laity following. And what was that uh, period again, John? From, the from AD 100. As we move on to the next church, Father, we will find out how this developed and what it turned into. Ignatius, Bishop of Antioch, in one, uh, AD 110, writes in his epistle to the Ephesians, Your Reverend Presbytery is tuned to the bishop as strings to a lyre. Let us be very careful not to resist the bishop that through our submission to the bishop we may belong to God. Clearly then we should regard the bishop as the Lord himself. In his epistle to the Magnesians, he said, I advise you to be eager to always act in godly concord with the bishop presiding as the counterpart of God, the presbyters as the counterpart of the council of the apostles. Thus, as the Lord did nothing without the Father being united with him, either by himself or by means of the apostles, so yet you must do nothing without the bishop or the presbyters. In his epistle to the Trillians, he says, when you are obedient to the bishop as to Jesus Christ, it is clear to me that you are not living as ordinary men, but according to Jesus Christ. Likewise, let all men respect the bishop as the counterpart of the Father, and the presbyters as the council of God and the college of the apostles without those no church is recognized. Hmm. He wrote to the an, an, an epistle to Smyrna in which he says all of you follow the bishop 
as Jesus Christ was the Father. Let no one do anything that pertains the church that pertains the church apart from the bishop. It is not permitted to baptize or to hold a love feast independently of the bishop. But whatever he approves, that is also well pleasing to God, that all your acts may be sure and valid. Now, huh, <laughs> incredible, yeah. it yeah. seems. Yeah. Mm. It took just 15 years from Clement of Rome, who started the idea of the church government by a priesthood, for that idea to be extended to include an increasing number of levels. Not only were local churches led by priests instead of locally grown elders, those <coughs> priests were under the authority of an all-powerful power, bishop who is now considered to be on a par with the Lord. Not, on, not only can this not be substantiated from the writings of the New Testament, it would appear that this is exactly what they were designed to prevent. Thus the churches became controlled by a hierarchy of men, mere men, yeah. rather than knowing the leading of the Spirit through each believer who comprised the church. Yeah. Now look us, let us look at uh, Tertullian. Some 90 years later, A.D. 200. In his writing, titled Bishops in Baptism, he says, The supreme priest, that is the bishop, has the right of conferring baptism. After him, the presbyters and deacons but only with the bishop's authority. Otherwise, the laity also have the right. But how much more is the dif discipline of reverence and humility incumbent upon the layman, since it also befits their superior? Does the laity also have the right? But how much more is the discipline of reverence and humility incumbent upon the layman, since it also befits their superiors? In his section on the clergy and the laity, he writes... The distinction between the order of the clergy and the people has been established by the authority of the church and by the honour which is hallowed by the special bench of the order. We should note two things. Priests are superior to the laity. And number two, church tradition is said to be authoritative. This is what they say. Yeah. Mm. In total contradiction to the writings of the New Testament, 
Churches are now being led and governed by a fully developed priesthood under the authority of a bishop. These men are considered to be superior to the laity. And most important of all, instead of the word of God, the final authority is said to be the church tradition as laid down and taught <coughs> by the hierarchical <coughs> priesthood. That priesthood should never have existed in the first place. <coughs> Some 50 years later, Cyprian, Bishop of Carthage, and we're talking about A.D. 250, writing about the Eucharist says, If Christ Jesus, our Lord and God, is himself the High Priest of God, the Father, and first offered himself as a sacrifice to the Father, and commanded this to be done in remembrance of himself, then assuredly the priest acts truly in, the Christ, in, in Christ's stead. And when he reproaches what Christ did, when he re reproduces what Christ did, mm. he then offers a true and complete sacrifice to God the Father. If he begins to offer as he sees Christ himself has offered. In a short 250 years, progress. the priesthood has become a vicariously <coughs> sacrificing one. This would eventually develop into the blasphemy of the Catholic Mass. That's right. But there is worse to come. Next week. No? You don't know where to go. The theory of apostolic succession. After all, how did the church fathers get away with the idea that they were in direct succession to the apostles? What reason did they give claiming such a doctrine? We must remember that the introduction of a priestly hierarchy gave bishops and priests such authority in the churches that any teachings they introduced, whether in line with scripture or not, would be accepted without question. And as we see, that happened. We must also remember that the Bible, which we are inclined to count so lightly, was not in the hands of the ordinary man in the street. In fact, it has not been compiled as yet. Also, it is good to remember that the early church fathers were fighting all sorts of heresies concerning Jesus himself and salvation. Every wind of doctrine was claimed to be spirit-inspired. Jesus was not God, but an angel. <coughs> Jesus was God, but had not come in the flesh. He was an apparition 
that took on human form. In fact, when you read 1 John, it's it, it, it really, um, we ha have to remember that John is writing against sort of Dorsetism, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is a form of Gnosticism. Gnosticism was on the rise. And they taught salvation was through secret knowledge. Anyone? Jesus said I did nothing in secret. Exactly. Many taught salvation was not through simple faith by all but by by all manner of works. Please remember, as we said earlier, that the New Testament was still not fully compiled. So how could they convince people Dr. Jane Drain, I've got his book upstairs, is a scholar of renown. He is a lecturer at Aberdeen University, adjunct professor of the New Testament at Fuller Theological Sem Seminary, California, and visiting professor at Morling College. Sydney. In his introducing the New Testament, he writes, and it's a long section, but it is important to realize that the movement towards a more authoritarian church hierarchy originated in the fight against unacceptable beliefs. At a time when Gnostics were claiming a special authority because of their alleged endowment with the Spirit, it was important for the mainstream church to have its own clear source of power. It was a, a little practical use for the church leaders to claim, even though they, if it may have been true, that they, rather than their opponents, were truly inspired by the Spirit. They needed something more than that. In the earliest period, supreme authority had rested with them. So they reasoned anyone with a recognized authority in the church must be succeeding to the position held by the apostles. They were the apostles' successors and could trace their office back in clear line of descent from the very earliest times. They stood in an apostolic succession. So we see that the fathers claimed that what they taught was correct because they were in direct succession and line of authority from the original apostles. This was no problem when what they taught was scripturally based. But much of it was not. Clement of Rome again. 
The apostles received the gospel for us from the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ was sent from God. Thus Christ is from God, the apostles from Christ. In both cases the process was orderly and derived from the will of God. The apostles appointed their first fruits after testing them by the Spirit to be the bishops and deacons for those who were going to believe. Clement's idea of a bishop was totally different to that of the apostles. We have noted that Ignatius stated that a bishop was a type of God. And the presbyters were a type of the apostles. Their authority was absolute and had to be obeyed. Arminius, Bishop of Lyon, notes, By the knowledge of the truth we mean the teaching of the apostles. The order of the church <coughs> as established from the earliest times throughout the world, the distinct, distinctive stamp of the body of Christ preserved through the Episcopal, that's bishops, succession for to the bishops, the apostles committed the care of the church, which is in each place which has come down to our time, safeguarding, safeguarded without any written document. Irenaeus acknowledges the teaching of the Apostles as being authoritative, but then goes on to add that the order of the Church, that is Church tradition, as established by the succession of bishops, is authoritative too. And note too, the teaching of the Apostles was in writing. The order of the Church was passed on by word of mouth. Bishop to Bishop. We've heard that before. <laughs> mm. that Hello. Mm. Isn't that the same as the Jewish oral law? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We therefore see that the Christian Church has literally fallen into the same hole yeah. that the New, the Old Testament Pharisees fell into. Yeah, exactly. They have been obedient to the order of the Church rather than to the written word of God. Writing on the procedure for choosing of a bishop, Cyprian, Bishop of Carthage, states, Therefore, we should be careful to observe and keep the procedure we received from the divine tradition and from the practice of the Apostles, which is kept amongst us. Thus we see that the wisdom and will of man took precedence over the will of God. No longer was church life to be governed by the writings of John, Peter or Paul, 
and the other New Testament writers, but rather on the writings, teachings, and traditions of men who came after them. Even though the written New Testament was available to all later on, there was no move to correct what had become practice based on some traditions. The clergy-laity divide was adhered to rather than the biblical model of all believers being priests. In fact, the idea of a clergy-laity divide is lovable. As W. E. Vine says, New, New Testament knows nothing of a sacerdotal class in contrast to the laity. Today we have a whole system in place, starting with the Roman Catholic Church, Pope, Cardinal, Bishop, Priest, etc. Next to the Anglican Church, minus the Pope. And so right on down to a Pentecostal in evangelical, uh, evangelical churches today, and even the house church movement with the big chief leadership known as the apostles <coughs> or senior elders. Mm. No matter who practices this type of leadership, Catholic, Protestant, Pentecostal or charismatic, wrong model. Does it surprise you to learn that the Bible knows of no such organisation? Ray Simpson, an ordained evangelical, evangelical spirit-filled Anglican priest states I can justify staying in the Church of England but it could, because it is committed to the teaching of the Bible and the early church fathers. Mm. Mm. The fundamental difference between biblical and unbiblical church leader is that the former is a part of the church, whereas the latter is apart from it. Leadership in the New Testament churches was by homegrown men who were simply seen as the older men, mature brothers, supplemented by widely functioning, travelling ministry. The fact is, 1 Corinthians 11.3 First part. Well, 1 Corinthians 11. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. That's it. The head of every man is Christ. Mm. Thus churches were governed on the basis of a collective consensual decision made by all those who were part of them. Mm. It was the responsibility of all, not just some, to establish from the Word of God through prayerful consideration what His will was concerning whatever 
issues arose. Any questions? Should have got yes. not, no and yes, void. Absolutely. I can, I'd like to find that where that scripture is. Absolutely. By your traditions you have made the word of God null and void. This time. Mm. And for our learning. Yes, sir. It's a lot to take in. Father, impress upon us what is right. Mm. Bless this food now. Mm. We ask in Jesus' name.